guys, Teresa here. Welcome back to Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be taking you step by step through my process of fitting pants. Fitting pants, fitting trousers is a journey and I am still very much on that journey. I am by no means a pants fitting expert, but I feel like it can be useful to see how other people fit pants because we don't always do them the same way. And you might be able to pick up on some tips of the way that I do it and it might work well for you. I'm in the process of making the Jenny overalls, which is a closet core patterns pattern. And I'm doing this as part of a little mini series called the Dueling Dungarees, where I'm comparing two different dungarees or overall patterns against each other. But these are really just basically trousers with a bib and some straps. So I need to fit them in the same way I would fit any kind of trousers. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how I fit trousers, any kind of trousers to my body. It can be helpful to use a pattern that has finished garment measurements, but if it doesn't, you can just take those measurements yourself from the pattern pieces. You just want to make sure that you subtract the seam allowance to get accurate measurements. We're going to change over to a different camera angle, different outfit, so I can show you how I take my measurements so I work out what size I'm going to start with. So I'm going to talk you through the measurements one by one. The first measurement you're going to want to take is your waist. For me, my waist is the narrowest part of my body, though it isn't necessarily for everybody, and it's also where I kind of fold and crease when I bend over to the side. So my waist measurement is 31 inches, which is exactly a size 12 for this pattern. As you can see, that's pretty close to my bust line, so I don't necessarily want my trousers to be sitting all the way up there. The next measurement you're going to want to do is your hip measurement, which is going to be the widest part of your bum area. It's not necessarily where the bones are on the hips, but the wider bit often is a bit lower down. For me, that measurement is 42 inches, which is exactly the size 14 for this pattern. Now if I take those measurements and compare them to the size chart, that puts me at a size 12 at the waist and a size 14 at the hip. But this pattern also gives you some additional information, which is the finished garment measurements, which is really helpful additional measurements. They give you the rise measurement, which is from the center of your crotch up until where the front of the trousers is going to stop at the waistband. Find the edge of my tape measure, put that into the center of my crotch, which is kind of halfway from front to back. Pull the tape measure up and then mark where that point is going to be. So I decided to start from the size 12. So for the size 12, the rise is supposed to be 13 and a quarter inches. If I measure myself around there, I get 35.5 inches, but the finished garment measurement for the size 12 at the waist is 32 inches. So definitely too small for me. I then did the measurement for the size 14, which is supposed to be 13 and a half inches for the rise. And my body at that point was 34.5 inches and the finished garment measurement there is 34 inches. So again, I'm still slightly too big for that particular size for that rise. So then I looked at the size 16 and for that one, you're meant to measure from the center crotch up 14 inches. And for me, my circumference around the area was 33 inches. And that is meant to be 36 inches when it's complete. I think three inches of ease is definitely too much for that particular part of the trouser. So I do not think I wanna size up to the 16 at that point. So looking at these measurements, I decided that if I increase the rise by half an inch and stuck with the size 14, that means I'll have 14 inches of rise where I measure 33 inches. And that gives me one inch of ease for the 34 inch finished garment measurement at that point. Now, if you think about the shape of a 3D human body, particularly anything at the back, depending on where you stick out the most, whether your bum is a bit higher, a bit lower, whether you've got more of a tummy pouch, it really will affect how the trousers are gonna fit you from front to back. I'm also gonna do something a little bit extra just to make sure that the shape and the scoop of the bum is gonna be right for me. And for me, I think the best way to do this is to use an aluminum foil crotch sausage, which is a really unfortunate name. You will understand why it's called that when I show you what it is. So to work out the shape and curvature of my body, I'm gonna take this aluminum foil, standard, boring, kitchen foil, aluminum foil, not anything fancy. From that, I'm gonna be able to work out the exact shape and curvature of my crotch curve. So you just bunch it up all the way along the length of the piece of foil. Make sure it's long enough that it's gonna stretch all the way from front to back. And you've got a sort of tubular sausage shape, which is where the sausage bit comes in. You're then gonna put it 
under your crotch and press it against your body to try and get it to hold that shape. You don't need it to be tight, you know, we don't necessarily want it to be crazy tight, tight trousers. I'm going to take this piece of tape and pop that in the center crotch just so I can know where the center bit is. And then when I step out, I can see that this is the shape that I'm going to want my trousers to be. So that's the curve at the front and the curve at the back. And I'll show you what I do on the pattern to see if I need to make any adjustments for my own shape. All right, so I've got my front and back pieces to the trousers. The first thing I'm going to do is increase the rise by half an inch. So here I've got the back piece. We're going to do this on both the front and the back, but I'll show you on this one. A lot of trouser patterns, and certainly this one has little lengthen and shorten rise lines, so you know that that's the point where you're going to be changing the rise. So I'm just going to cut along that line. Makes it really easy. And then we're just going to add a little bit of paper so that I can put that exactly half an inch above where it was. So I've got my scrap paper here. I always make the most of my scraps. I hang on to things when they don't work out. So I'll always just secure one end before I do anything else. Doesn't matter if it's straight on the paper underneath it, you're just trying to stick in place. And then I'm going to use my quilting ruler to mark exactly half an inch below that point. So you don't have to use a quilting ruler, it just helps you to be able to line up the whole thing together. If you have just a little short ruler, you can just make some little marks on the paper or just line them up section by section. This is the easiest for me. And then I also will try, if I can, to keep an eye on where that grain line is gonna be, just because I'll find it easier to line these up correctly. So this grain line that I've got at, let me just get it right on the five inch point, that's where I want this grain line to match up. And I'm just trying to butt them right up against each other no pun intended. <laughs> and then that's where I'm going to want to take it down, ta um, tape it down. So I just tape along that point. And as you will see, I've, I've got some excess fabric. So I just need to trim that off on both of these ends. And I've also got some excess at the back. So I'll go ahead and trim that down. If you've used a big old piece of paper, you're going to have a whole lot of flappy bits that you don't need, so I tend to just trim those down. And that's my increased rise. Shortening rise works very much in the same way. You just cut along that line and then you're going to overlap by however much you need to shorten the rise. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the front piece. So now we get to the interesting bit, the crotch sausage part. So I know that the rise is correct. I'm not worried about this length, so I don't really want to adjust that now because I've done the measurements and I know that that's correct for me. I'm more interested in the shape of the curve at this point. So this is the front of the trousers. This is my crotch sausage that I made earlier. This shorter bit is the front of my crotch. I've got more at the back. Some people have more at the front. So that's why it's really useful to put this marking here. Because if you didn't have that, you might think that the center of your crotch was just at the center of this little hoop. But it is not for sure for me. So I'm going to try and place this, bearing in mind that there is a bit of a seam allowance, just to look at the general shape of the curve. And to be honest, I'm pretty happy. I think that is pretty similar to the shape of my own crotch. So. I'm not really going to adjust that one because I feel like if anything, I'll get a little bit of extra, extra shaping there. I feel like that's pretty good. Now, if we look at the back, this is the shape of my crotch curve. So again, I'm trying to line this up so 
it's going to be about where the seam allowance is going to be. As you might be able to tell, the shape of my bum is a bit different from the shape of this particular pattern. So my bum, I would say, is a bit more kind of round coming out, whereas this one's almost more of like an L shape. I mean, I'm being very like exaggerating the shape of it. It's not really an L, but mine has more of a curve to it. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to scoop out this section of the back and by that I mean I'm going to remove that panel of fabric. If I didn't, I feel pretty confident that I would end up with this area all up in my bum with a huge wedgie. So scooping out the crotch curve more is going to give your bum a little bit more space in the area. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trace a line around here. We're being fairly approximate. I wouldn't be so fussed about getting it precise. I'll smooth that out later. But that shape is definitely a bit different to the pattern and part of that's gonna be where your bum sticks out and part of that is just gonna be, you know, the, the shape of your own human body. So I've got my curved ruler and I'm gonna use this just as a guide to try and get a bit of a neater line. So I'm gonna go from the top, I don't know how easily you can see that line anymore. I'll make it a bit darker when I'm tracing. Hopefully you can still see. But basically this is a, a pretty similar curve up till that point. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace around that bit. And then when we get to this curve, we do need to still go in a little bit. can see that's kind of extending. And hopefully you can see, I have changed the shape of this quite significantly. So it might be easier to tell now that it's a bit more rounded whereas the original pattern is a little bit more of a angle at this point, almost like a semi right angle, whereas mine's more of a gradual curve. So this is hopefully gonna fit me a little bit better than if I made it just out of the packet. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up a muslin and I will show you how that's fitting and see what adjustments I need to make from that point. So these are my made up muslins. Obviously this is a really super lightweight fabric, so it kind of bends and moves with my body a lot, so you need to bear that in mind. I feel like the front sits pretty flat. I'm quite happy. You're never gonna have zero creases, but I think that is pretty good. Looking from the side as well, I feel like that's not bad as far as like the way that it's pitched. These can sometimes sort of pull a little bit one direction or the other if it's not actually the right fit across there. But I feel like that is a pretty good even line. What you might be able to see from this angle is I definitely have a bit too much at the top of the waistband and I have a lot too much at the back of the waistband. Bearing in mind this is gonna be overalls, I don't necessarily want it to be like super tight, but I think I could lose just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just pinch out and pin just that much, and then I'm gonna compare that to the actual pattern piece, which will mean that I'm gonna end up making slightly more of a curved waistband at the front. And I'm gonna do the same at the back, though it's gonna end up being a little bit more the whole waistband I think needs to go in a bit, not necessarily just the top of it. This is just because I've got, you might not be able to particularly tell here, I've got a little bit of a, a sway back. So basically my back curves outward as my bum starts. So it's gonna be a bit more narrow above it. And so to kind of mimic that shape, the waistband needs to be a little bit more narrow towards the top, but also it just does seem like where this is sitting, it's actually just a little bit too big for me in the bum. If I turn around, let me turn around, I am pretty happy with the shape across the bum. So remember, I changed the, the shape of this curve quite a lot. It would have been scooping right into my bum. It is a looser fit because it's a trouser. I think the shorts version is probably a little bit sort of more fitted in this general area, but I think that should be pretty good for a pair of overalls. I think I'm happy with that, apart from the little changes I'm gonna make in the waistband. I have gone ahead and pinned these now, so hopefully you can see 
It's not like it's super tight, but it's definitely more fitted now at the front. And I think it's pretty obviously fitted in the upper back of the pants. So I feel like there'll be some room to tuck in a shirt, but I feel like there'll be a better fit. And when I do make these as trousers or shorts, I feel pretty happy with the way that it is. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so here we've got the muslin that's been all pinned out. I just wanna look and see what changes I need to make on the pattern. So I'm gonna start with, this is the front. You can see the pockets are here. I ended up just basically doing like a slight wedge out. So this is the bottom edge of the waistband. So it, the bottom edge is actually fine as it is. It just needs to narrow up as it goes toward the top. Now just having a look to see, it is only needing to go in about a quarter inch from the top edge and then it's just gonna angle slightly downward. And that is from the seam allowance, so bear that in mind. So my plan is to try and do what I can to try and start at a quarter inch at the top, narrowing down to no actual tapering where the bottom edge of the waistband is. So this is our waistband front. So we've got our center front marked, which makes things a little bit simpler. And because I know that I want to be narrowing in a quarter inch in total, it's going to be an eighth of an inch from the inside corner basically or what I could even just do, I think, and I probably will because it's fairly straightforward, is I'm gonna make a little mark. This is relatively approximate, but I think pretty close. I'm gonna want to go in about this much here and about that much there. I want to make sure that this is narrowing in, like I said, where the seam allowance is, which here is 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark 5 eighths of an inch from the top. Yeah, and that is where I need it to be narrowing from. But I want to make sure, let me just move up. From here, five, say five eighths of an inch. This is the point from here where it needs to be definitely together, and I would probably rather it be together from a little bit above that point. So, what I'm going to actually do is cut down the middle. Ooh. Just a tiny bit above that point. So, that's been about nearly a quarter of an inch above that point. Then I need to overlap these until these two lie flat. And I'm gonna tape that in place. And we've ended up with a slightly more of a kind of a curved line here. It curved a little bit at the bottom and it curved a little bit at the top. What you could do is put a piece of paper underneath and sort of make that more of a curve than a little ridge. But to be honest, when I cut this out, I can just eyeball that to be a bit more of a gradual curve because it's not a huge change. But that top section now is going to be that bit smaller so that it will taper out to the point where it's meant to be at the seam allowance. The next change was at the center back. You might have noticed when I did my little video when I tried it on, I'd actually accidentally pinned this slightly over to the side. So I've just readjusted this to be right on the center and I've just stabbed myself as I took that off. Um, so this is in the center, just as much of a wedge as needs to come out. The top waistband here is just one continuous. There's no seam in the middle. So I'm gonna want to remove everything here on both sides of the pin. Now, if I have a look on here, I can see that it is about three eighths of an inch, slightly longer than three eighths of an inch at the same all the way down the waistband. So I just need to chop out this twice. So three eighths plus three eighths is six eighths or three quarters. So I just need to cut out three quarters of an inch across the whole of that back waistband. What I can do is I can measure three eighths on one side, three eighths on the other side, Ooh. 
And if I cut this chunk out and tape it together, that is now going to be the length that I want. And so that is my new back waistband piece. As far as this little wedge that I've got, which is underneath that back waistband area, as you can see, it's wider at the top and it tapers in much like darts will do. And what I would rather do, instead of having an additional kind of narrowing at the back, particularly because I'm using corduroy fabric, I'd rather it be really nice and straight up and down there. I'm gonna take this width and actually add it to the darts that are already there. So I'm just gonna deepen the darts on either side. So if I look to see at the very top point of here, where that is, I mean, it's gonna be very similar, isn't it? It's basically, it's at 3 eighths of an inch. So I want to add this 3 eighths of an inch on this side and then the other side of here, this other 3 eighths of an inch will go to the dart on there. So it's going to add that onto each one. As you will see, if you're gra gradually easing that in, it honestly will end at exactly the same point. So it should work out to just add those into the darts themselves. Now I am aware that this is a bit busy. I had to print out all of the sizes and I wasn't entirely sure what size I was gonna go for. So the yellow highlighted marks that I've traced out are for the size 12 and the orange is for the size 14. I went with the size 14, so it's the orange one that is my starting point and I need to add 3 eighths of an inch to the overall size of that dart. So what I'm gonna do is look to see where we are 5 eighths of an inch below the top edge of this. So that's going to be my seam line because I want to be 3 eighths of an inch at the seam line. And then I'm going basically 3 sixteenths of an inch. So we're trying to go halfway for the 3 eighths of an inch. So if I take that as my starting point where I've got this edge, that's going to be here at this blue line. I'm gonna do the same at the opposite side. We're gonna go green, because I think that's gonna stand out, hopefully. We're gonna stick with the same dart point, because we're trying to follow the same beginning and end point. We just need to extend And then hopefully you can see this green line here is a widened version of the original dart that I had. And so that's going to give me the extra 3 eighths of an inch at the point where the seam meets the waistband. I'm not actually gonna make another muslin of this because I felt pretty confident once I pinched those areas out, they were minor changes. I feel confident knowing that if I make the changes on the pattern piece, it's gonna fit me really well. But if you're not sure, if you haven't done a lot of adjustments and you wanna be on the safe side, you obviously could make another muslin just to make sure that the fit is right. But I know that this one's gonna fit me really well, so I'm gonna go with that. There is one extra stage that I did that I'm not gonna show you here today just because I don't wanna to do too much spoilers for my dueling dungarees, but I did actually do a basting fit of my final fashion fabric as well. So I cut out the trousers as I have measured them as I've shown you, and then I did the back darts and I did the pockets on the side seam just because those are important for the full construction. And then I just basted them together at the legs and at the crotch just to see how the fit was compared to the muslin. The fabric that I'm using for this is a corduroy. It doesn't have any stretch to it, but it does just have a little bit of mechanical give, so it does pull a little bit, and it's a bit more structured than the muslin fabric that I used as well. So I do always recommend doing a based fit with any trousers, even if you've done a muslin, unless you've used the exact same fabric, because it can behave differently when you put it together in the actual garment. When I did the base fit, I still had a bit of excess, so it was a little bit too big at the center back area. So I ended up taking another small wedge out just in that center back seam, just below the waistband. And in total, it ended up being an inch taken out, so half an inch from each side. This just helps then to give a little bit of more shaping around my sort of lower back into my bum, because I do have a slight curve there. I've got a sway back. So that just meant that it was gonna hug my figure really well. And just like I did with the muslin, I then transferred those changes onto my pattern pieces so that when I make these trousers in the future, it's already made up, hopefully, in a way that's gonna fit really well. But I will still make a base fit just to be on the safe side. 
I really hope you found it useful to see how I fit trousers to my body. Obviously, all our bodies are unique, very complicated. It's never gonna be that easy to get something to fit you right out of the packet. But I do find that this technique works well for me, and I hope it might work well for some of you as well. If you have any other tips or tricks on how to get trousers to fit well, let me know in the comments down below. I am always learning, like I said. I am not an expert on this, so if you've got any other thoughts of things that I can do to improve my pants fitting, I do want to hear about it. You will get to see the finished article of these very soon. I'm going to be putting up the final videos of my dueling dungarees, hopefully in the next few weeks. If you want to see how they turn out, do make sure that you've hit that subscribe button. Do give me a like down below as well if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye!